I'm Mara. If you love film, cinema, arts, this is your channel. So don't go anywhere, subscribe and be with me. I'm so excited to talk about the new movie Exorcist Believer. Is this franchise? I don't know. So I want to know. If you want to know, be with me in this way. What we know about the Exorcist Believer. Two young girls bring something nasty home from the foods in this too busy, uninvolving position movie. A half century ago, the great William Fredkin directed The Exorcist. Blowing box office records and audience minds. Now David Gordon Green, not content with uh, meaning the Halloween franchise for a trilogy of uneven follow-ups, has returned to visit the same fate on one of the highest grossing films of the 1970s. Kicking off with The Exorcist Believer, this latest recycling project will continue with The Exorcist Deceiver, planned for 2025, but uh, no word yet on the third. Green has clearly studied William Fredkin's original as if it were a holy or unholy text and reproduces some of the master's technologies for setting viewers on edge. For instance, adding a disruptive sound such as a car horn when the movie cuts from one scene to another or cutting away to unnerving oddly framed close-ups when characters are having important conversation, flashes of demonic faces and bloody wounds, shot of jackhammers and so on. If your main tribe with the original was its preoccupation with a single victim and the dogma of just one religious denomination, then this overpopulated sequel has you covered. Clearly believing that more is more, Green and Peter Sattel's um, screenplay gives us double the position, more than uh, triple the fates and parcel of enthusiastic exorcists keep them straight if you can the exorcist believer is a pretty good movie that saw stuff with characters and not quite developed ideas that you may come away from it thinking about what it could have been instead the film becomes less complicating as it goes along however ultimately uh, succumbing of the horror movie uh, equivalent of the problem that often afflicts superhero movies packed with lots of heroes and villains. The story's energy gets dispressed and the movie uh, gradually loses touch with the source of its initial power. The privilege of focusing on the main characters, a widowed father named Victor Fielding and his daughter Angela. We meet Victor in the film's prologue set in Haiti, where Victor and his very pregnant wife, both photographers, are vacationing. An earthquake collapses the building they're staying in and crushes her though uh, not before she accepts the local's blessing to protect the baby. Doctors tell Victor they can save his wife or unborn daughter, but not both. We know how that turned out. Thirteen years later, father and daughter live in Atlanta, Georgia, where the Victor has a traveling photographic portrait studio. The now 13 years old Angela asks permission from her understanding super protective father to have her first ever after school studying visit with a classmate, her best friend Catherine, whose parents are Catholic. Unfortunately, this is no ordinary study break. The girls spend a couple of furtive 
hours in the woods near the school communicating with a spirit at the bottom of some kind of a bounded shaft. The movie initially seems as if it's going to be another Catholicism-centered exorcist flick, but this is a misdirection that sets up some good jokes, not on Catholicism itself, but the way so many exorcist movies treat the Vatican as the uh, a spiritual equivalent of the Avengers. The film ultimately apps for more of United Nations of a spiritually approach. Nothing the most cultures throughout history have had equivalents for position and exercise. Then assembling experts to attack the demon from multiple theological angels. Do you really think uh, it was better than uh, the first movie? I don't think so. Uh, when I saw the first Exorcist movie, I'm so scared. Um, maybe because I'm so little. Uh, okay, subscribe me, be with me and Tell me what you thought about this movie. Thank you. Love you. Bye.